another off the cuff video. Really need to stop doing this to myself. Anyway, <clears throat> a few hours ago, I watched the film The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez, and I loved it. It was awesome, it was amazing. The film was released in 1982. It was directed by Robert M. Young, and it starred uh, Edward James Olmos in, in a role that <clears throat> really put him on the map as, as, a big, um, as a big star, as one of the uh, premier uh, Latin American stars of our time. Uh, <clears throat> it's based on actual events that occurred uh, of a Mexican-American farmer, uh, Gregorio Cortez, who shot and killed a Texas sheriff um, because of a simple misunderstanding. <clears throat> Quote-unquote, spoken in a language that America did not understand, according to the trailer. Um, according to history, uh, the real Gregorio Cortez... Uh, fled the law for 10 days before finally being captured by Texas Rangers and tried, he was tried and sentenced to prison, sentenced to uh, 15, 50, 50 years in prison for second degree murder. Then in 1913, he was released from prison. He was pardoned and released from prison. And then uh, three years later, he died in Nuevo Laredo. To say the very least, this movie is a piece of Texas history. <clears throat> I know, I know a, a thing or two about Texas, uh, mostly concerning the Texas Revolution, you know, like the Alamo, Sam Houston, Stephen F. Austin, and all that. But this movie is so much more interesting than any of that. And it's kind of a wonder to me that this film isn't taught in schools yet. Which, uh, which is kind of understandable, is in that it's the, uh, it's it's only now that it's been released on home video. But anyway, Cortez, Cortez himself passed away in Nuevo Laredo, which is like uh, thirty or forty miles from where I live right now in Laredo, Texas. And Edward James Olmos as Gregorio Cortez gives probably the best performance I've ever seen him uh, give in any movie that I've ever seen him in. And I've seen uh, stuff like Stand and Deliver and a few episodes of Battlestar Galactica, and those were great. But this is this is so much better. So much better. Uh, as a humorous aside, I was actually fortunate enough to run into uh, Edward James almost in person uh, at Comic Palooza in 2011 uh, in Houston. Uh, I had so many questions that I wanted to ask him, but the first thing that I did when I walked up to his table was like, Oh, oh, Mr. Olmos, can I get a picture with you? And he was like, No, 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 no pictures, no pictures. And then his bodyguards, or whoever they were, there were two people sitting, sitting, standing on either side of his table, and they escorted me away from his table. <laughs> and I really wanted to ask him some questions, and I was kind of bummed out. And uh, to add insult to injury, there was an old woman and, uh, and a little girl b behind me, and they were really ha they looked really happy to see him and i was like oh man oh man but that didn't stop me from snapping a picture of him anyway anyway back to the movie <clears throat> the ballad of gregorio cortez is, is is a great movie like i said but there are several reasons for that that make it there are several things about it that make it such the acting the acting is probably the first the first and foremost thing um, that makes this movie great uh, as great as it is um, not only from Edward James almost, but also people like, uh, like, uh, Brian James and Bruce McGill, uh, but also, uh, uh, two, two actors whom I didn't recognize, like, who, uh, um, named, uh, James Gammon and Tom Bauer. They, they, uh, they were prominent, uh, uh, characters in the movie, and they were, they, they gave pretty good performances. They were solid, but... <clears throat> Another one of the things that makes this movie, totally makes it for me, is the music score. They, um, the producers of the movie, they didn't have a lot of money to work with, like only a uh, million dollars, which might sound like a lot, but apparently in 1982 it wasn't. So they couldn't afford, afford something like, uh, like a, a full orchestra with Ennio Morricone style music, like, like electric guitars and, uh, vocals and, uh, all that stuff. So what they did, they just composed like a, a simple bubbly synth score, like 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 Blade Runner or something like that. 
And they, they also had an, uh, an acoustic guitar thrown in for good measure. But for the most part, it's just bubbly synth scores. It's just a bubbly synth. It's interesting. Um, I've never heard... I've never heard a, a, a bubbly synth score in, in a Western like this. Ever. Ever. And I, I, don't, I, I don't think that it's, that it's ever been done in a, in a Western film like this ever again. Uh, I mean, when you think about uh, bubbly synthesizer scores, what do you think? Science fiction. Fantasy. Um, maybe some psychological horror movies like uh, It Follows or something. Or uh, drama movies like The Social Network. But not westerns, not westerns, and that's uh, another thing about this movie that makes it so unique to me is is <clears throat> the music score. It's it's money, it's money, it's freaking money. Um, but a word of warning, a word of warning. If in case you want to see this movie yourself, and you have to because I say so. But a word of warning. Um, the, the movie is spoken in English and Spanish. So, there are a lot of characters in the movie that speak Spanish. Uh, uh, primarily, uh, Gregorio Cortez and his family. And a, a few other Mexican characters. Um, they speak Spanish. They speak nothing but Spanish. And it's not subtitled. None of it is subtitled. The, the English language actors... They speak English, but you would think in a movie, in, in such a movie like this, they would subtitle the Spanish uh, speaking, the, the, uh, the Spanish language uh, speaking actors, but they don't. <clears throat> no subtitles on the Spanish language speakers. Um, and uh, it wasn't that much of a problem for me, but... What I did uh, was, and I don't recommend doing this at all, um, I had to pause. I was sitting there with my computer as I was watching it, and I was on Google Translate, and, uh, and, and I had the, sub, the English subtitles on. That's another thing. Uh, when, when you watch the movie on Blu-ray, like I did, or DVD, they have English language subtitles on the DVD, of course. And, but even then, even then, they don't translate the Spanish language. <laughs> They just they just run the Spanish text <clears throat> with the English subtitles, and every time that happened, every time I saw a Spanish sentence, I was on Google Translate and I had to type it in word by word uh, to see what exactly the, the the Spanish language speakers were saying, and it was it was kind of annoying. It was kind of annoying, and eventually, towards the end of the movie, I just gave up. And. Um, <clears throat> But I don't recommend doing that. What I do recommend is having a bilingual friend or relative or whoever, someone who speaks Spanish and English, and translating it, uh, uh, translating the Spanish language uh, speakers for you, so you don't have to pause the movie every 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 couple of seconds whenever someone speaks Spanish. But apart from that, great movie. Great movie, highly recommended. One of the best. One of the best westerns that I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of westerns. I love westerns. But this one might just be... Might just become one of my favorites. Among my favorites. Uh, it wasn't available on, on home video for a long time. And that's probably why a lot of people haven't seen it. I, I think it might have been shown on TCM uh, a few times. Uh, but other but other than that, it's it's not as as well known as it should be, and that's a shame because it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. But now the friendly folks at the Criterion Collection have released it on Blu-ray and DVD, so that means it's good. Anyway, salud.